Hi, so we've been looking at reclaiming and repurposing and reusing discarded equipment, mostly discarded kitchen equipment, but all kinds of things really. Now, if you're going to start looking at that sort of stuff, you're going to come across an awful lot of these things, electronics boards. Um, this one was pulled from a toaster, and it has a, a really interesting thing here. There's a little electromagnet there, actually, so that's kind of cool. Um, this thing, I forget where that came from, but there's a, a quite a few interesting bits. There's a relay there, there's a nice toroid there, it's got good capacitor, a couple of power resistors. So there's always lots of really interesting things on these boards that can be reused. Uh, and this stuff, actually, is the real curse, because an awful lot of things um, can just be pulled apart and re-smelted and, and reused. These things, when you burn them, they tend to be pretty toxic, and it is an utter pen in the neck to get this stuff off. So it takes a lot of effort to get it off, and, and that makes it worthless, really, because these, these aren't very much to buy, and if you're going to spend a couple of hours trying to pe take one off, it's just not worth it. People get fed up, and this is the curse. This is the thing that really gets thrown away and really causes all the problems. Because removing them is about... Uh, taking this solder off and pulling them out and once you do that you can reuse them but it's a utter pen in the neck and takes forever. So somebody said to me, Rob, why don't you do a video on making a desoldering bath so that we basically can dip this in the bath and just pull them off. And I thought that's an awesome idea actually. And so we're going to do a desoldering bath specifically recover the components from things like that. A uh, desoldering bath is uh, actually really quite easy. It's um, a pot containing molten solder, which obviously is the right temperature to make that liquid. You put the top of that in the molten solder, all the other solder gets uh, loose, and you can just pull the bits off really quite easily with a pair of pliers. So it's a pot with molten solder in it. Now, that's a heat application. And any heat applications really have the same three things involved in them some kind of heat source, some kind of heat control, and some kind of box you can put it in. Those are the three things that you need, and you're going to do a heat application. Now, with a soldering bath, what we need, really, is a small tub that we can apply heat to the bottom and that we can get into, because we don't want to get a great big vat of solder. We want quite a little bit of solder. So once you think about that, then you've got to start looking at where your heat sources are coming from. Now, obviously, we've got a whole host of things kicking around that we can use as heat sources. Uh, I'm actually going to use this because it's a, a little two-ring oven that you can buy for sort of £15 or so, and you probably see by the state of this. I've had this for a number of years, and it's finally time to uh, repurpose it or throw it away or something like that, because I also got another one, because this one's just getting a bit too uh, horrible and cruddy, and I just don't want to throw it away. I want to find a use for it, so I'm going to use this. But there are other things that you can use. This, for instance, is the base plate of a, a household iron. Now, the base plate of a household iron will get up to about 250 degrees, just as an iron. If you do a little modification to it, which is about changing the bimetallic contact, you can get that up to about 500 degrees, no problem. And here's the heating element right there. And, of course, that's all nicely sealed in. So if you were to cut this out, which you could do with a Dremel or an angle grinder, you'd get a sealed-in, beautiful heating unit dedicated to the purpose of heating that metal plate. You fix that metal plate to another piece of metal, so uh, there we go. Something like that, you've got, a, you've got a desoldering bath, so that would be a really cool thing to do. The other thing you could do is pull apart a toaster, which is what I did. Inside a toaster, what you've got is a whole load of this thin strip. This thin strip, actually, is canthal wire. Now, the canthal wire can be bought on the roll, just like that. And this is made for kilns. I use this to repair my kiln. So you can get the canthal by buying a roll or by buy, pulling apart a toaster. The good thing about the toaster is this material it's on is a sheet mica. It's quite tough uh, and allows you to cut a shape and wind the canthal around that shape. And there you go. You've got another heating element. So you need a source of a heating element, and there are lots of things around from buying canthal wire, pulling apart a toaster, using a household iron, or in my case, this thing here. The reason I'm using this thing here is, is it was once for that, and, and I could put my tub, whatever size I like, onto there, and I've got myself a really nice um, heating unit. 
The other thing that I need, obviously, not only is the heating unit, is some way of controlling it. Now, there are lots of ways of controlling it. Um, toasters just use time, as it happens. They have a, a little circuit in there, controlled by this potentia stat, that um, ticks away the time, sometimes based on an IC, sometimes based on a capacitor-resistor combination, charges the capacitor, the resistor drains it, that's of a fixed time. The potentiometer acts as the resistor, you change that resistor, you change the time the capacitor drains, and the capacitor drains, it breaks the current through the electromagnet and it pops your toast. So, toasters just use time. The bimetallic strips are really interesting material. It's two layers of metal on top of each other, and when you heat different metals, they expand at different rates. Commonly used is brass and copper. Sorry, um, brass, copper, and steel. Brass and steel is very common. When you heat that, you'll get a bend going away, and you have a little screw contact here. Screw the thing down to that level. As it heats, it already is just releasing the tension that the screw is holding on it until it gets to the set temperature when it just opens that contact. The higher up the screw, then the lower the temperature needed to open the contact, and so you can use that as an analog way of controlling your heat. Now, that's what you'll find in uh, household iron. It's also what's in here, incidentally. Another more controlled way takes a little bit of electronics. <coughs> and so you'll need to buy some electronics. Here is a PID controller, it's a temperature controller. It actually controls this, which is a solid state relay. The solid state relay takes its control from here and turns the power off and on here. It does that by taking a signal from a thermocouple. So you need three parts, a PID controller, a solid state relay, and a thermocouple. If you wire all those together, then you get really nice control. You get digital control over your heat. The only problem is they're about 30 pounds or so. So if you want to do a, re a really controlled job, then you want to be spending the £30 to get yourself a little controller set, which, as I say, is the relay, the controller, and the uh, thermocouple. All that is a heat sink for the relay. Um, but you want to spend 30 quid on that, and that will get you really nice control over what it is you're going to do. For something like a um, desoldering tub, where you don't really want that massive amount of perfect control over something. You just want to be able to hold it in the range of somewhere around about 235, maybe 400 degrees, somewhere in that range. Then a um, thermocouple, a bimetallic strip, sorry, is going to be ideal, really. Uh, and we'll have a look at a closer look at what a bimetallic strip contact looks like when we take this thing to pieces. So there's a whole host of ways that you can do that. Now, when it comes to making the box, again, you've got a whole host of decisions you can make. And it, it's basically to do with um, prettiness more than anything. So I made a heating bath out of this. And, and all this is is a frying pan, an ashtray, and an old toaster. And that's how I made that heating pan. I think it kind of looks pretty. It's a very low temperature, so I don't have to worry about the base. Um, but we want to get up quite high, so we need to get it um, really a bit more consideration on what that's actually going to be like. Okay, that's enough of me talking. What I'm going to do now is build that uh, desoldering bath out of this old cooker. Again, remember, anything follows the same principles. This old hot plate. And um, I think I'm going to make the container from this, because I happen to have it around. It's sheet aluminium, it's about a millimetre thick, it's plenty, really. And I'm going to score, cut, bend and fold that, and fold that up into my container for um, my desoldering bath. So that's the plan. Let's take this apart and have a close look on the inside. So the main reason for choosing this was that it really was made for this originally. We're just repurposing it more than anything because obviously it's a heating unit. It was made to boil water, cook food, gets up to about 500 degrees centigrade, no worries at all. And it's all nicely sealed and rated to do that job. So we've got some nice rubbery flex that'll take the heat. We've got some control buttons here, little LED and two plates. So if I flip that over... Got a nice connection block here external to the unit where we can see that the power has been connected to these cloth covered wires. These cloth covered wires are uh, heat resistant, rated to the temperature this will reach. Got four screws in the bottom, and we can pull that open. 
We'll pull that open and have a look at the inside. Okay, so there is the heat control. That's a bimetallic strip. So the knob pushes down, pushing that little lever there down into contact. When that heats and bends, it has to bend further, so it takes a long while for that contact to open, which means that this gets hotter. Those two contacts, one goes to the heat plate there, one goes to the heat plate there. All these wires are nice and cloth covered, We've got an on indicator light there. And I'm going to take this apart now, you've had a look on the inside, and have a look at those components on the bench top. Okay, so here's our hall of gear. These are the heating coils, and incidentally they're the same ones that you find in your oven. What they are is a coil of canthal wire. Um, stuck in this tube here and then packed with an awful lot of ceramic and that's all they actually are and they used to reside here in this cast spiral so I've taken them out of the cast spiral and they lift it out relatively easily so that we have the coils all by themselves because we, we don't really want that plate we just want the heat the next bit we've got is two rather nice here and here bimetallic strip analog heat controllers Remember, we're going for analog because we don't really need that much control. If you want more control, then obviously you're going to have to buy yourself a controller. But this is a bit of scrap I have lying around and I want to repurpose it. They're the knobs, they're the LED, um, sorry, these are neon lights. Then we have the case that uh, connected the live cable. There's the quality live cable with its rubber and heat insulation. Here's a whole load of heat insulation wires uh, with some extra heat insulation there. So we now have everything we need to make the internals of our um, desoldering bath. Okay, just to get a sense of what this is going to be like before I uh, actually start cutting the metal, is I've got a bit of cardboard and made up a mock box for it. So I can open the box, that will give me my map for putting it onto the metal and cutting the metal. Like I say, you don't have to get a sheet of metal, you can um, use something else, like a, an old pan or, or a cooking dish or a tin that was something else or a project box, a whole host of things. But I'm going to um, cut and fold that sheet metal and fabricate a box that looks like that. It just gives me a chance to see whether everything works. So remember, this is going to be sunk down a bit and, and that's the bit where the um, solder is going to go. My control knob will go here a little LED light indicator on there so everything fits rather nicely it's kind of ergonomic it's it's a bit large we could make it a little bit smaller but I quite like room to work and then I can actually do my desoldering and soldering in there and the heater unit will go in there with plenty of space to keep the heater off the bench and um, plenty of connection room for everything so a quick mock-up allows me to do all of that take my measurements and transfer that to my sheet of aluminium. Okay, so here it is transferred to the aluminium ready to bend. I've drilled out lots of the holes already where the uh, neon light's going to go, the control switch is going to go, these are actually cut um, self tappers I'm going to use the whole thing together. I haven't drilled out the big hole in the centre, I've just put a, a marker hole in it because if you drill out the big one, when it comes to bending it, round here gets quite weak and, and you get a distortion, which is a bit irritating, really. So I've drilled out all the holes and all I have to do now is bend it. Now the bending sequence, you have to have a think about it because um, these tabs, and that's what they're going to be, are a bit rough. And that's okay because they're going to be inside the body, but they need to be a nice 90 degrees. So they want to be bent first, really. And so you need to have a quick think about how you're going to bend it because sometimes things get in the way. Anyway, let's get on and bend it. <laughs>
so I've drilled the hole in the top and now I'm going to try and fit my ashtray into that hole. Okay, and that's the body of the um, machine made. Now I need to fit all the electronics, make a bottom, put some feet on it, and we're ready to go. When I say electronics, of course, what we're talking about is this thing, the biometallic strip, uh, this thing, the heater coil, and the neon light. Okay, so that's it finished. I've left it open so you can have a see. It's wired in exactly the same way that the cooker was wired, because basically all we've done is take those bits and put them into a different box. But there's the heating coil. I've held it down with four angle lines there, so it's nice and firm, actually. There's the um, biometallic strip, which is our temperature controller. In line, incidentally, here, there's an automatic cutoff switch at uh, 250 degrees C240 volts. So a bit of a safety feature in there. Uh, the neon's there. That's what it looks like on the top. So all I have to do is put a bottom on, which I've made, which is made the same way. Just a piece of aluminium folded over and some feet screwed on. Put the bottom on. There's the connection block. Again, we took this off the cooker. And um, those are crimped connections, which according to the wiring regulations are permanent connections. So we crimp them together, we stuff that in, screw that cover on, screw that on. All we have to do then is turn it off, uh, turn it on and get some solder in there. Okay, the unit itself is actually working really nicely. What we've got here basically is a pool of molten metal. And the unit heats it up slowly and then keeps it at temperature. Now I've made a couple of little things. I put a cooling fin on here because I was a bit worried that that plastic was close to this aluminium body and the aluminium body obviously gets quite hot. And then in here I put some insulation as well and as you can see it's actually working really quite nicely keeping that metal liquid. Now I've never done this before so it is an adventure for me. What I plan on doing is trying to remove a few components from this board here. Uh, and we'll see how well we go. Now, it's quite difficult to grip the edge of the board and, and slide it in there. So what I've done is I've drilled a um, hole in the board and I've inserted a screw so that I can actually hold that a bit more successfully than just trying to grip the edge of the board. So I'm gonna grip that screw and we'll see what we can do with it. Uh, I've got a pair of pliers here to pick that off. And I believe all you do is dip the thing in. Oh yeah, that is all you do. Look at that. Oops, I've just dropped it. That's a shame. So that just comes straight off when you dip it in the hot metal. That's awesome, actually. <laughs> Sounds like I'm frying. There we go. Look at that. <laughs> that is really quite awesome. It takes no time at all when you're used to it just to get that in there and pluck that part out. That is amazing. <laughs> I always find it a challenge to get these bits out. Sorry, these bits. They're transformers and I absolutely love them because you can do so much work with them. So I'm going to give that a go. Look at that. Straight out. That's amazing. Okay, I have never owned one of these before, so I don't know that much about them, but clearly temperature is an issue. So um, we're gonna have to read that temperature and maybe mark some temperatures on, something like that. It's because they, just having it liquid metal, obviously is not enough. It needs to be liquid, but at a certain temperature. 
but it's astounding how those components come off just so easily and so cleanly. I mean, the heat is probably going to damage some of them. It certainly did with this power connector, as you can see. These are power resistors I took somewhere else, no problem at all. Toroid, no problem. That's a little like electromagnet from a toaster, no problem. So it's just a load of gear that I was able to get off, particularly when they have multiple solder points that was just a piece of cake. So I'm loving this, actually, and I'm going to play with that a bit more. I might put a PID controller in my, uh, mine, actually, do an update on it and do a PID controller. But for a bit of scrap that you find around and half a day's effort, that's an extraordinarily useful tool, I think. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching.